Welcome back to Bug Fables. I'm Dear Darling, and shall we continue our adventure of our resolute trio of Vi, Kaboo, and Leif? Now, last time, after making our way through the Lost Desert and through Defiant Route, the Defiant Route, we made our way to the Bee Kingdom, and we've gathered the other four adventurers who are here, I guess, for this meeting. With, well, I don't really know, so let's find out. It seems only Kina is left. Oh nah, she gave us a part, so we're good to go. She's shameless, that's what she is. Then if these are all the explorers, we shall open the throne room. Be on your best behaviour, even a for even glancing upon our queen is a privilege. Oh, of course, Miss Card. We adore the queen and would never dream to upset her. <laughs> are you the same off of her? Who's Kina? <laughs> is that Mackie's sister? Be silent and go in. All right, I think I think that's Mackie's sister. My memory's a little bit hazy. That's been a while. Oh, you're a bee queen. You do not look like I expected. My queen, the Ant Kingdom's explorers have arrived. The doctor's here as well. Oh, adorable, aren't they? Welcome. I hope the hive has shown great hospitality and kindness towards you. Y yes, we are grateful, queen. Oh, most respected queen, your words humble our heart. We are truly blessed to be in your presence. Muffet Verd, don't overdo it. Shut up. Uh, yeah, it's nice to be back. Vi, is that you? You have grown so beautifully into a fine bee. Uh, um, we have heard of your exploits here. You have brought pleasant surprises to my days. That's great, Vi. Uh, thank you, qu queen. Uh. The hive is wonderful. Makes me wish I was a bee. <laughs> now, now. We all have our wonderful place in this world. This queen is something else. If only ours took note. But now, the time for pleasantries is over. If you don't mind, let us get to the matter at hand. H. B. Yes, my queen. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought the queen said it. I got really confused. As we all know, the, grateful, the graceful ant queen has made a heavy request of our kind. The core of the honey factory, which we owe this great kingdom to, has turned out to be an artifact. Under normal circumstances, we would have, we have we'd have to deny even the queen her request. However, she has provided us with all we need to build a new core. R right, Kina should have delivered them to a factory already. <laughs> yes, I have gone there and gave a quick examination. With my incredible intellect, I can quickly create a suitable replacement, all due to these materials' incredible quality. It is a quite, it is quite a simple ordeal, isn't it? Or almost feels like we've gone through a bit too many formalities. Never, Your Majesty. There is no request we will not acquiesce for the act squeeze. <laughs> ah, if you are true of your word, that would make me most happy. For I would like to invite you to accompany the Doctor to the Honey Factory and witness this pivotal exchange. You are not obligated to go, but it would warm our heart if you did. Yes, yes. Sure thing, we would love to see even more of your kingdom. Yes, for one seeing how honey being for seeing honey being produced sounds delicious. Leif, you are not to eat any of it. Ah. Um thanks. We'll go. Vi Queen Contrary to what I believed, it seems the outside world did you some good. You look so grown up, your team has my thanks. Ah, um you're welcome, Queen. I haven't changed at all. I'm the same Vi. <laughs> a mother knows best. Maybe you've yet to notice. Well, yeah, I mean, they're bees, that's obvious, isn't it? I just had to be mind blown by the fact the queen was Vi's mother, but that's how bees work. <laughs> well, well, shall we go? The queen is speaking. Shut your mouth. No need to be so ruthless, my dear guard. <laughs> but you are indeed free to go onto the factory. It's to the west of my throne's entrance. Vi, please take care of everyone as they explore, as sure as I am that there will be no issues. Yeah, I will. You can count on me. Dismissed. Ah, <sighs> let's go, Zasp. About time. Now, teams, I start to pick up some tools. We'll meet up there. Don't let the wind blow you off the bridge. Sorry, my microphone fell again. Jeez, Vi, you made bees seem so mean. When you have a graceful queen like that. Even we are disarmed by her words. They remind us of Elizant. I was mad at everyone, okay? Even so, you shouldn't have bad mouth from. Fine, I'm sorry, okay? And I'll... Uh, 
I'll fix stuff slowly. Can we just do the mission? <laughs> All right, let's go, team. Can we speak to you again? Oh, what a lovely queen. I love the calming music as it uh, fits the atmosphere. So I suppose we'll take the time to go west, not this west. This west? Is this it? This path leads to the honey factory. Please watch your step. Will do. That was a misclick. Am I ignore that? Wait. What? What is it? Team, don't fall down. Oi, calm down. A bridge is not the best place for sudden outbursts. Look, everything in the factory is super expensive, and they don't let you leave mid tour. I see. We should shop beforehand then. Yep, let's save some berries. Or we could spend a little not to have to go all the way back. What? Other queens allowed you. Go on in our head. Is she saying just don't buy things here? It's a factory. You can't buy things as a factory, can you? Wow, there's so many tourists. This is a famous honey factory. Amazing, right? Here's where we produce all the bagarious honey. Oh, um, ignore this pile of scrap. Some explorer left it here and walked out. Boring. Let's go, Zap. Zasp. Anyway, I'm Tubi, your delightful tour guide. While the incredible doctor builds our new core, I'll show you around to lots of fun. Yeehaw, can't wait. Sounds like a good opportunity, doesn't it? Science is incredible, but not the best spectator sport. By the time the tour is done, I've assembled everything. So go on, have fun. Thank you, Doctor. We will enjoy this for sure. Knowing how the honey is made, this is an opportunity we cannot miss. It's seriously nothing that cool. Maybe for a bee. For us, it's a great experience. <laughs> alright, alright, jeez. It'll be fun, I guess. Okay. I'm gonna assume that was Mothra and Zasp messing things up. Uh, what? So I might say at this point, I was a fool and thought I muted my microphone while I was adjusting it after it fell. And uh, turns out I didn't mute my microphone. So when I unmuted myself, I muted myself again. So I'm gonna do this voiceover all um, in post after. <laughs> but this isn't too many episodes on. This is maybe like one, one or two episodes on forever long. So anyway. What? But Code 32 is? Doc, what's going on? Code 32 means the factory has been attacked by hostile forces. But how? We didn't see anyone on our way here. Doctor, we must leave. We can retrieve the artifact later. Indeed, it's not just us. Tourists and workers need to evacuate too. Guide, do you know where we can where the overseer is? N no, it's routine checkup time. She could be anywhere. Tch, without the overseer, we're stuck. What? Code 32 will be locked down for the entire factory for a week. <laughs> that is, until the Overseer enters with disarm code. We suggest turning our trip around the factory into a rescue mission. Great idea. Finding her will fix all our problems, really. Uh, Alright, uh, we'll help. With such a capable group of explorers here, we should be okay. For now, I will work on the cause replacement. You should focus on the rescue mission. Let's do this. You heard that, Mothava? Let's... Wait, where is she? Where's Asp? Huh, he's gone too. I bet they have something to do with this. For this one's? Probably not. Guess we'll have to search for them too. Because we didn't have enough to do. Let's go, team. So yeah, I'm sorry, I'm an absolute fool. So this is my post-narration stuff. I don't remember what on earth I was talking about at this point. The path on the right leads to the overseer's office. Maybe you can find something to help there. And I was like, oh no, what a sad bee. Oh no, I just got a job and everything's already ruined. Ruined? Why does this always happen to me? With the factory closed, I can't sell stuff to fill up my quota and I'll get fired. No. Oh, excuse my stomach. Uh, uh management doesn't have quotas during emergencies. Oh. Some make believe won't hurt by. Miss, we'd love to shop here if you'd have us. You, you will? Ah, alright. If there's customers, I can't move around. I'll set my shop up. And then I was like, ooh, look at this fancy shop here. Um, all, all of these honey things, which, you know, actually, in retrospect, these are actually some pretty good items here. I assume these are things you can make with a uh, chef stuff later, but um, I haven't yet, so I picked some up later. Spoilers. Welcome to the trendy shop in Ola, Bulgaria. I also, hey, this is a famous factory something, 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 something. Didn't really read what she said. I'm sorry. Uh, I also commented on the fact that for some reason I only had 11 berries, and I do not remember why I only had 11 berries. Um, 
but it's okay. We get lots of berries later on. Spoilers again. I'm sorry. We walk into the overseer's office, and I was like, wow, what a pity if she was the one that was on the statue around. A portrait of an overseer? A bit narcissistic. It's not like that. This is the honoured employee portrait. Bees that worked really hard get to put, be put up there for a few days. Is there no hall of fame for you, honoured employees? Yep, it's inside the hive, so you two can't see. So an team could be would be the honoured employee? Uh, I would. No way, it'd be me. Awaiting nomination? Poor Leif. I think everyone should be um, uh honoured employee of Team Snake Mouth. I also noticed a the glitch there and the boomerang disappeared for a bit. Oh no, it probably went horizontal. Um, I think I commented on the fact, the fact that that factory pass was just there, lost on top of a bookshelf. Quite a hunch, but we think this is at Ophis's office. Mm -hmm. Incredible. How did you figure that out? A hunch. Oh, uh -huh, bye. There's no way that Overseer would be hiding in here, right? I sure hope so. We'll make our life way easier. Then she's definitely not here, but let's look around anyways. For a random pass that someone, some, somehow someone dropped on the top of a bookshelf, but still. And we walk into the dormitories here. Hey, normally tourists can't sleep here, but it's an emergency. Care for a nap? Alright, I'll wake you up if something happens. And of course, we'll take a nap because I'm through and I make use of any free nap I can to recover all my HP and TP. Though I feel like I might have been full HP and TP before this anyway. Talk to the other NPCs. Watch out with the hammy. Honey, it's super sticky and the machines here charge it with numbing electricity. If some turret shoots at you, make sure to block. Then, psst, bye. I know we're stuck, but if you need any magic seeds, fork over 25 berries. Um, at this point, I didn't remember what magic seeds are, but if you're like me and you forgot, they're the things which you can use to revive uh, allies for 7 HP. Pretty good. My training didn't cover this. Oh no, the Obis is stuck in the storage. We can't gain access to the core without her. Mother than the boss guy entered the storage just before the lockdown. Maybe they had something to do with it. I was also commenting on that bee worker's face, I thought it was hilarious of <laughs> Frightened eyes. Honey processing plant. Door's locked. Need a card or something. Where could it be? Hmm, maybe the overseer's through here. There's a way to the factory core, but only the overseer can open the door. I've never actually seen the core itself before. Wonder how it looks like. And of course, this is the way to the core. Find the overseer. Meanwhile, I'll be working on a replacement key. This looks so complicated, but I can do it. Let's take a gander at the core here, and, well, we can't get in anyway. We don't even have the option to try and not get in, so... We'll continue down this regular path. As it opens up for us, and we'll start exploring. Ah, the door. Thanks, Team Snake Mouth. <laughs> it's our time to shine, Eri. Can't let them do everything, right? Y you sure we won't get in the way? Relax, it's just a factory. Let's go in and do what we can. Uh-oh. The factory's super dangerous just for the sentry bots. What? what? Team, we must give chase. And I was like, why, why would you not tell them that before they went in? But still. I thought this guy was an enemy. He's not an enemy. He's just a friendly NPC. Beep beep. Tram system status. Offline. Contact Mabi for repairs. As we get introduced back to these switches, which we haven't seen for ages. Due to lockdown protocol, some platforms will be routinely shocked. Bee workers, please hover to evade the shock and evacuate safely. Sh shocked? Ooh, good thing I can fly. There's no choice, Vi. You will have to leave us behind. Oh, hey. What if I need to cut or free something? Leif, have you gone mad? I impressive. W wait, come back. You did a weird thing again. We took some time to think about it, and we can control it. If we hold down B, we should be able to cross safely. Can't really jump or walk fast while doing it, though. Incredible, Leif. You may have just saved us a lot of trouble. No flying needed. Uh, if Jen and Eri got through, we would have found a way. Let's depart. So, Leif can now use Bubble Shield while holding down B. And they can now use Bubble Shield in battle. Um, Despite the fact that we use it so often, you'll find that... <laughs> in, I don't know if it's this episode or the next episode. I completely forgot about it at a very crucial moment. So we fight these enemies first. These enemies are so annoying. This shocking enemy. Like, the amount of enemies which can shock in this entire uh, factory are... It's really troublesome. Well, someone let the Denmarkies get out their page. We're going to have to smack them before they zap us. Seriously, 
every single enemy in here can shock like this can another end there's like a sentry turret which can and i'm just like why can everyone being shock and oh yeah here's where we notice there's two public shields one is to shield everyone but disables lay for the next turn and one is to shield just one person which I suppose, now I think about it, there's an enemy later on which has a, a like a four turn delay attack, which I suppose that's what you're meant to use it for. I can tell you, I didn't use it for that. <laughs> I just spam Ice Wall and Frost Coffin, Frozen Coffin, whatever it's called throughout this entire factory. See, I blocked it here, so I didn't, I didn't realise how annoying this enemy was because I didn't get shocked. But it is seriously annoying. Yeah, I Frigid Coffin them. So, so I don't even realise, poor me. My past me are so naive to how frustrating these enemies could be. Because I knocked them out so quickly here. I think I was deciding that I should use skills more, um, less sparingly, seeing as we level up so quickly and we can often find Venus flowers to charge them up again. And then here we run into this sentry bot B thing. Don't really know. As I struggled to find a spy option. The heck? He put blasters on Beep Boops. I'm gonna have to knock him out of the sky. These Beep Boops are quite interesting enemies. Um, I was particularly confused about what they were doing. They're switching stuff every single time, but they're just switching forms. <clears throat> whatever form you leave them in is whatever form they'll do an attack. So in this form, they'll do um, they do a shooting attack, which is much easier to block than the other form, which is a very quick dash attack. And plus, the shooting attack is better because you can. Um, it only does like one damage, but three times. But you, seeing as block reduces the damage by one, it's much easier to get a zero damage done to you compared to the, ooh, the charge attack, which is like three damage in one. Here was me understanding what this, this shocking stuff does. I don't know what on earth I paused for. And also know if you're playing along for, as you might do, um, you can't jump while in shield form. So, you can't do anything in shield form, in fact, without um, interrupting with shield form, so just be warned of that. And we run into this turret here, which I believe can also, was the other enemy which can shock. I'm actually doubting myself now, can it shock? I feel like it can. So annoying, you think they stop firing at me since I'm a beer or Let's pummel it. So, yeah, my great strategy of using, using my ability, seeing as we have 20, 22 mana, uh, not mana, teamwork points it's basically mana or i mean i guess i could call it like flower flower points is that what it was called in paper mario i think that's what it was called of course i'm talking about the first two paper marios not um related ones of super paper mario and stick star i mean super paper mario was actually pretty good i thought it was just a, a different take it was more if you don't know uh, the paper mario thousand year door and paper the original paper mario is much closer to what bug fables is like with this action sort of rpg style not action rpg just like turn-based RPG story element style and they changed it up in the next one which was Super Paper Mario which was much more like a, a platforming well it was a platformer sort of and that's how all the battles took place in like a 2D platforming style I guess <laughs> I don't know how to describe it so I'm absolutely horrible at describing these sort of things um, and I think it was an interesting change of the formula and I think it was also my first Paper Mario as well so it was pretty fun well to me I don't know if I'm looking at it with like rose tinted glasses because of nostalgia but it had stuff going for it. And then the one after that, I believe, was Sticker Star, which was for the 3DS, which I never played because I heard it was really not good. Or maybe it was the colour one. No, I think it was Sticker Star first, but I heard it didn't stand up um, to its predecessors of Super... Oh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario. So I never played it, but I heard it was weird. And then they had a uh, colour something something. You know I'm not playing right now, I don't need to control this, I can just look it up for myself. Paper Mario Sticker Star Paper Mario Colour Spray? Was that it? Colour Splash, that was it. Which, I came out with a Wii U. I don't know if, like, basically anyone had a Wii U, <laughs> apart from me. I had a Wii U. I mean, I mainly used, like, it's weird because I use a Wii and the Switch, like, all the time to play solo player games. Um, the GameCube was a bit before my time, so I didn't really have, a f I didn't have one. I, a friend had one, which I played some games with, and N64 was way before my time, which another friend had, which I played with sometimes. Um, 
the Wii and the Switch, obviously, I mean, if you're watching my Animal Crossing series, I actually play on quite a lot, a lot of the single player games. Saying that I still haven't played Breath of the Wild. I'm sorry, I've had it since release and I've never played it. <laughs> Just confessionals. Um, anyway, what I was going to say was the Wii was an interesting console, wasn't it? It was a it was a console I spent basically no time playing through any other single player games. In fact, what single player games did I even have on the Wii U? I had Smash 4. What else even came out Wii U? Hold on, I need to figure out what games even came out. Wii U games. Like Breath of the Wild, um, I didn't have that. Splatoon, I had and I played for a little while. It was pretty good. Mario Kart 8, I actually played some of that. I didn't play that as nearly as much as I played Mario Kart Wii. So... Yeah, maybe I didn't have all that many Nintendo the Wii U games. Mario Party 9? Was that on Wii or was that on Wii? I might have been for the Wii. I can't remember. Pokken Tournament. No, that I got on the Switch, don't I? Yeah, apparently I don't have many games on the Wii. The Wii U. There's even Pikmin 3 on the Wii U, which... Pikmin was a fantastic series. That was a game I loved playing. Pikmin. Like, I beat Pikmin 1, like, a couple of times, I think. Pikmin 2, I'm not sure. Did I ever beat Pikmin 2? I'm not sure. I think I got pretty far in it, though. But yeah, other than I just stopped and never got back around to it. I probably found like a really hard dungeon and I couldn't beat it for a while so I just stopped and then just never picked it up again. I mean that happens a lot I feel like with certain games. I mean I feel like it happened, I don't know. Well I mean, talking about that, like I don't want myself to get discouraged. I want to finish games through to the end so um, that's why I basically started this YouTube channel in the first place. So to give me motivation being like if I s stick to a schedule I'm going to play through these games. I mean, also during this quarantine lockdown, I don't really have much else to be doing at the moment, so <laughs> this is how I'm feeling, choosing to fill up my time. I don't know how my friends are filling up their time, to be honest. Anyway, I'm, I'm much more of an inside person, so who likes to spend a lot of time with their computer, so this is basically what I've been doing. And it's been great, I've been really motivated to play these games, I'm like, oh, I just have a desire now to play these games, probably because I know I'd enjoy playing games as long as I start it and then... I need to get back into... What am I trying to say? Basically, like, I, li I like to play games, obviously. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people do. But I find it's always starting a game, which is the hardest. Like, I can't find the motivation or enthusiasm to do it. But as soon as I start it, I'm like, wow. I'm having lots of fun with it. And I just want to keep playing it. So this is what the sort of scheduling is there for. So I just keep playing them. Not keep playing them, but I have reason to keep playing them. So I keep going back to them. So yeah, that, I mean, this has been a bit of a weird tangent, I suppose, about <laughs> what I'm talking about. Here, I was really confused. Here, I remember I was like, what happened? How am I in combat? Because I, I, I was trying to jump on the cogs, which were in the foreground. Um, turns out this guy got a sneaky shot on me. So there we go. Yeah, so I'm glad for this YouTube channel. And I'll take this time to... I know basically the people who subscribe don't watch Bug Fables. Um, the, the people who do subscribe, I'm pretty sure, are watching New Horizons, which I'm very thankful for. So I should talk about it more there rather than now, but thank you if you have been watching and supporting this channel in whatever ways you have been doing it. Even if it's just, you know, like, increasing the view count, giving it a like, leaving a comment or subscribing. It means a lot to be small YouTube channels, I'm sure, so thank you. I'm like, I'm even a bigger question, how do you find this channel? <laughs> how do... Like, I don't think I've ever found myself wanting to, um find small YouTubers and see their playthrough of games, so the fact that people do is flattering, to be honest. Uh, oh yeah, here's one. <laughs> this is a, sh a short tangent. I mean, this it's not really a tangent. I'm talking about the tangent. The, this game is what's actually going on. Here's why I found out the real nuisance of the numbing effect, as it prevented Kabu from flipping that guy out of his um, rolled-up shell. But yeah, so thank you for searching up these small channels. And continue to do so. I'm sure all the small channels are very thankful for your support and your views, your likes, your comments, and your, well, whatever else you contribute in the end. Um, or whatever else you do in the end. Contribute makes it sound like you have an obligation to you, which you have none. Of course. But yeah, I, I just think about factors like, how do you even find these? Like, I, I don't think I've ever searched up a video game and then gone sc scrolling down far enough to find small channels with just like sub 50 subscribers you know but i'm thankful you did 
Beep beep. Pump status offline. Honey, stability critical. Contact Mal B for repairs. I actually forgot that I had to actually narrate some of these lines every so often. Right now I'm just idly chatting, which is, you know, nice. I kind of like doing this, to be honest. This is the sort of thing I'm trying to turn my animal crossing new horizons, you know, play through into. Because right now, um, I've done a lot of the major tasks, or the short-term goals, so... <clears throat> it's turning into my own mini-podcast style, sort of, venture. The problem is, I'm not very good at talking and playing games at the same time, so... <laughs> it's a little bit awkward for me. But I, I suppose it comes with practice. Um, I think uh, I owe it more to the fact that I'm not a very good conversationalist. I'm much more quiet and reserved when it comes to things like this, so... Training grounds notice. Remember that doors only stay open for a while, so crank it up and run for it. That's meant to be a big hint for what's about to come. And I just noticed what... Um, well, I'll talk about it when it comes to it. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, I'm not much of a conversationist, so I find it difficult to fill in all these... To continue continuously talk, I suppose, for about half an hour or so. <laughs> So that's why it's easier with these sort of games, like Bug Fables, I can narrate for most of it. I can talk about what's going on. Kind Words, well Kind Words was a bad exception because Kind Words I basically didn't narrate for most of it. I just typed because I was thinking so much about what I was typing. Which is kind of why it's getting, um, I'm stopping doing Kind Words as a series on YouTube at least. Uh, before I was very confused about what the lever did and it turns out it raised up the, the cage that was surrounding this spinny thing. But yeah, and Animal Crossing New Horizons, um, it was... How should we say? It was another one of those the games where I could just commentate on what was going on rather than having to improvise conversation as we went along, so... But now that we're achieving most of the goals, it's becoming a lot harder and harder to do that because there's not really much to talk about. We're seeing a lot of repeated dialogue, of the, there's nothing special happening particularly on some days. So it's the sort of times where I feel like I need to fill the conversations with my, the gaps of my own conversation. Which I try. I'm not great at it, but I'm trying. <laughs> Especially it doesn't help that I'm recording a lot of them Animal Crossing stuff in the morning because I want to check turnip prices. And in the morning, my, like, my voice is all like this and I'm like, oh, I'm dying slowly and I just like woke up or... And I'm not infused or anything as opposed to these other games which I record. Well, right now it's like 6.30, but normally I start recording at like 4ish or something. Sometimes I do a bit beforehand. So yeah, I'm try just trying to get into a good routine of things. So anyway, as I record more New Horizons, thank you for watching them, if you are watching them. I'm having a blast of a game. I absolutely love Animal Crossing, so no surprise there. Hopefully it's something where it'll become more entertaining for a conversational topic rather than just for gameplay in itself. Otherwise, well, otherwise, I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Anyway, we're getting up to pretty close to the point where my microphone comes back. But first we'll read this out from by. Ah, it'd be a bummer, honey. They mix too much honey. We're in big trouble. We've got to take it down or freeze it before it explodes. So yeah, um, what was I saying? <coughs> oh, we're getting up to the point where I basically got a small interruption. Um... So, uh, there's a, a little jump cut in the recording, which uh, I uh, am unmuted for, for like at least the last final minutes of this video. So, if you're worried about that, don't worry about that. I don't know why you'd be worried about that, but there you go, if you are. Um, um, um. Yeah, so it's been, it's been an interesting venture, dubbing over videos and posts. Honestly, a lot easier. There's a lot less to concentrate on. I suppose this is what podcasts are sort of like, <laughs> in some aspect. Although a solo podcast I don't think is... I don't think I have the charisma myself to carry that sort of thing by myself. But you know, if that's what this sort of practice is for. You can only get better at something by practicing. Well, in most aspects at least. So yeah, I think at some, some point through this door that we'll have a little jump cut. And when that little jump cut goes, this future, dear darling, will be gone. So, goodbye. Sorry about that, a little interruption, but um, we are encroaching near the end of our time anyway. Well, so we'll make our way over to Eri and... Uh, I can't remember your friend's name, I'm sorry. And then hopefully we'll round off the episode here. Let's... Oh god, this angle is so hard to see, this honey. 
We'll save them from whatever disaster they've got going on. And then we'll end the episode there. Team Snake, Team Snake Mouth, help, please. Don't worry, we're here. Not with Leif in front, please. <laughs> we will start out with Leif. Ice falling everyone, as is possible. I really can't get the double freeze off anymore. Maybe I, I got it through sheer luck last time. I'm not actually sure. Don't you have a thing which can hit multiple people? I thought you did. Apparently you don't. I, I swear I used to be able to use Ice Fall to um, freeze multiple people if I landed it in between them, but I might have just made that up. Ooh, okay. I do not like that attack. So much harder than this attack <laughs> to block. Oh, we need Lave to hit. Let's see, we need to... Okay, so we use Lave on this one. Because <coughs> Lave only does one damage. And we get Vi to knock this one down. And then use Kaboo to... Well, not finish him off, but... Damage him, at least. I'll switch to the easier to block form. The timing of that is so lenient and so nice. <laughs> so knock him out. Perfectly done. Hi, you two. Phew, we owe you one. Again. We may have to start charging them. Nonsense, Vi. What did you do to get rushed by Bee Boops? Oh yeah, we were like, trying to switch out. <laughs> Interesting. I was gonna stay here controlling it while Eri crossed, but then they went crazy. This place is too dangerous, you shouldn't split up. You should return to a safe place, we will take care of this. W wait, we can help, seriously. We can stay here and press a switch, right? And all of you can cross. That's a fantastic idea, we're impressed. I'll settle our debt with Vi too. She was just kidding, do not worry. Right, kidding. But will you be okay? What if you get ambushed again? Eh, doesn't seem to be anything dangerous left around. Trust us, okay? Just go on, press that button to give us a holler and we'll press a switch. Okay, but... Oh, that was the thing on freezing. Before we do that, we're gonna round off this episode here because it's encroaching on 30 something minutes. So if you have been watching, thank you very much. This has been Bug Fables and I've been Dear Darling. I hope we can see each other again, but for now, it's our farewell. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>